A young teen gets invited to meet his girlfriend's family for the first time at a Thanksgiving dinner. And he's already pretty nervous about this, but his girlfriend ups the ante by saying, hey, if it goes well, we can have our first. And the guy's like, ay, caspita, now we're talking. But now he's even more nervous. So he decides, well, what can he do? He goes by his local pharmacy, the Walgreens, talks to the pharmacy. He's like, hey, you know, this is my first time, but tomorrow night I got to with my girlfriend. I need some protection. You got any options? So pharmacist is like, hey, we got the root for her pleasure. We got the this, we got the triple, whatever. So like, okay, well, I'll take that quadruple magnum PI situation. So he gets the big, uh... anyway, <laughs> he leaves. The pharmacist is like, okay. The next day, they're all at the family dinner. They got the turkey on the table. The girlfriend notices that the boyfriend's there praying for an extended period of time, whispering to himself. And she's like, Ma, I never realized you were so religious. And the kid's like, I never realized your father was a farmer. Well, I just got back from doing a physical at my doctor's office. I, I gotta be honest, I don't really do them often. So it's been a long time since I did one. But it was kind of weird because in the middle of it, uh, the doctor just tells me, you know, uh, you have an average size. <laughs> I was like, my, uh, I mean, I didn't ask, you know, just unprompted. But I was like, I guess that's good, right? I mean, you know, is this like the whole country? Or uh, he says, uh, oh no, like just amongst my patients, you have an average size, but the average of everyone. So I was, uh, I was just like, okay, well, I mean, that's good too. I mean, average is good, right? He says, well, you got to keep in mind, I'm a pediatrician. A guy in a bar approaches a hitman that charges $10,000 a bullet. He says, hey, I got a job for you. Hitman's like, what's the job? He says, my wife's having an affair with my friend Fred. I want you to shoot my wife in the head and Fred in the... Yeah, Hitman's like, okay, well, fine, I'll, I'll do the job. So they track down the wife at the Holiday Inn. They're on the rooftop. The uh, Hitman's looking through the sniper rifle, through the scope, through the window. Minute after minute goes by, finally the guy's like, my, when are you going to take the shot? He's like, well, give me a second. Uh, I'm trying to save you $10,000. So this father buys a lie detector machine that beeps every time somebody lies in the house so when his son comes home he says hey son uh, you were school today right and so it's like yeah sure of course beep it's like okay i uh, we went to the movies beep so the lie detector test keeps beeping and so he's like okay okay i went to the bar had a couple beers with my friends father's like marona you're drinking beer at your age i would never beep the lie detector goes off then the wife from the kitchen's like ah uh, like father, like son. Beep. What do you call someone who's afraid of Santa Claus? Claustrophobic. What do female reindeers do when their husbands are at work? Well, they go into town to blow a few bucks. What do you call a Santa Claus who also lives at the South Pole? Bipolar. And why is Santa Claus always so jolly? Well, he knows where all the naughty girls live. What do you call a kid who doesn't believe in Santa Claus? A rebel without a claws. Claws. Why did Santa send his daughters to college? To keep them off the North Pole. Um, why did the Grinch rob the liquor store? He was in desperate need of some holiday spirit. What did Santa tell his wife? It's going to rain, dear. An Englishman, an Irishman, and a Scotsman die and go to heaven. They're stuck at the pearly gates with St. Peter. That looks down upon him and says, if you want to get in, each one of you has to present me an item that represents the spirit of Christmas. The Englishman goes first. He looks through his pockets. He pulls out a lighter. He's like, oh, look, this is a candle. This St. Peter's like, all right, it's good enough. Then next, the Scotsman goes. He's like, looks in his pockets, finds some keys. He jingles them. He's like, get that bells. And St. Peter says, okay, fine. Finally, the Irishman's like, Madonna. Well, in Irish. And he's like, looking through his pockets. He's like, oh, he pulls out a pair of panties. St. Peter's like, my, eh, what does this uh, have to do with Christmas? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> These are carols. Crazy story. The other day, my friend's wife decided to take him to a strip club for the first time. You know, trying to spice things up, work on things, you know, whatever. So that, But as soon as they get into the strip club, the bouncer's like, hey, Davey, how are you? So she turns around puzzled, like, ma, scusa questo. And he's like, oh, no, no, this guy, we bowl together, you know. So we play together sometimes. She's like, oh, okay. So they sit down. Waitress comes over. Hey, Davey, here's your Budweiser. She's like, ma, scusa, the waitress, too. And he's like, as soon as he's trying to explain, uh, a stripper goes, throws a leg over the table, says, hey, Davey, you ready for your usual dance? Marona. She blows up. She's like, this is a lion. She bolts out of the joint, right? Goes over. So Davy chases after her. He goes outside. He sees her. She's getting into a cab. So he chases her down and is able to slide into the door and sits right next to her. We tried to plead his case. You know, but she goes off. She calls him every name in the book. Finally, the cab driver turns around and is like, man, Davy, looks like you find yourself a real bitch tonight. 